All right, this is Fabtech 2018, the preheat. JD Brewer, Apex Welding, put together a meetup, and there's a bunch of folks in here. We're getting ready for Fabtech. We're warming up for Fabtech tomorrow, but right now, we're having a good time with some food and drink. With a lot of people you'll probably recognize, so let's go in and wander around a little bit. So this is Rick Bishop, he's Rick's Got It on Instagram. Rick recently, I don't know how recently, but recently went into business for himself, runs a welding business. How, how long ago was that? Uh, almost a year now. All right. So I, I actually broke out on uh, on October 13th, it was a Friday the 13th, but so it's very memorable for me at 2017. But you had to remind me recently, we originally met at a previous fab tech in Vegas. Yes, sir. That was your first fab tech. That was my first fab tech. Are you looking forward to this fab tech? Absolutely. Check out all of these people. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. No. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is David Des Moines, and you're D Des Moines on on Instagram. Yes, sir. Yeah. So David runs his own welding and fabrication business. You looking forward to fab tech? Absolutely. Every year. How many have been to? This is my third. Third. This Chicago. is my like twenty third. <laughs> Going, going for a while. Yeah, looking forward to it. Started in Atlanta, the first one I went to, so I'm really? Really, yeah. Oh, cool. A lot of years ago. It took welding school. They took us, like 20 of us, and showed it to us, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Got to see a bunch of different stuff yeah. and had no idea what was going on. I got bit by the bug. I think it was, it was either 90 or 91, my very first one. It wasn't Fabtech back then, yeah. but I've been to, like I said, close to 25 by now. I, I look forward to them every year. I won't tell you what year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, Thanks. Dave. I want to thank JD for putting this uh, this preheat meetup together. <laughs> we call it a preheat. I like it. Warm it up for Fabtech. Fabtech's tomorrow. We're going to hit hard. So we got I don't know how many people are here, but there might be 100 150 people here tonight. Thanks, thanks for putting it together. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is Jim Bollinger. You might recognize him from Do Right Fabrication how you doing? channel. Yeah. How many Fabtechs you been to? Uh, this will be my third. Okay. Third. Okay. You looking forward to it? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, last year was so much fun, and man, you get to meet so many people. Yeah, now you there? Yeah, yeah, we met there. We met our buddy guys, in Chicago. Yep, that was an awesome deal. You, know, you do some work with Lincoln, don't you? A little bit. Yeah, I teach for it. Okay, do some trade show stuff. I teach the basic fundamentals of tech welding. Cool. So it's a uh, it's a good time. Good good group of people to work with. Very knowledgeable. Uh, the guys that taught me what I know have probably forgotten more about welding than most people. Yeah. Carl Hose knows Carl, Carl the Hosenator. The Hosenator. <laughs> yeah. Learned a lot from Carl. Dennis yeah. Klingman. Yes. Dennis, Dennis has been my mentor. Yeah. He's who I've learned so much from. Dennis has been a great inspiration to me and encouraging me to pass what I've learned from him on. So yeah. It's been a, a great relationship with him. Thanks, Jim. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right. This is Dale Berry, Metal Tips and Tricks YouTube channel. Yes, is that right? It is. Okay. It and then kind of and familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, it does sound a little bit familiar. That was my wife's my, idea. My lawyer will be in touch. Okay. You better be damn good. <laughs> Yeah. Looking forward to Fab Tech. Oh man, it is crazy there, isn't it? It is. It's like you see things there that the size of this shop that they brought in set up and yeah. running. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Right. And my good friend Andrew Carden. Andrew placed fifth at World Skills Welding in what year? Uh, 2015. 2015. He worked for Lincoln Electric for a little while as an instructor, and now he's uh, welding pipe, doing the API 1104 thing. Down, a little downhill. They pay for the arm and they pay for the rig. <laughs> Andrew's a good egg. You looking forward to Fab Tech? Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a great time. Just this body alone, kicking off and stuff. It's going to be. It's going to be another one for the books. Another one, another, for the books. another one for the books. It's going to be epic. This is epic right here. This is epic. This is this is a huge turnout. And it's it is ten past when they when they said it was going to start. So this yeah. is going to be. This, yeah. if, this is turn. How many? Everybody was here at four o'clock. It's supposed yeah. to start at five thirty. Supposed to start at five thirty. Yeah, Andrew's something like that. He's from Boston. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Man. Yeah, not a problem. Zero eight four. Yeah. All right. Hey, just want to say thanks for everybody to come out tonight. We'll see you at Fab Tech tomorrow. 
if you're at home watching this and you couldn't make the Fabtech, we'll see you next year. This is Fabtech 2018, Atlanta, Georgia. Last night we had a great meetup at JD Brewers, Apexish, uh, at his shop. They had about 150, 160 people there. It was a great time. A lot of talent in that room. But we're going to go in here. We're going to check out Fabtech. Bring you along with me. Let's do it. booth real quick. I'm doing a class here today on filler metal selection. I don't know how the booth is going to be set up or even if I'm going to weld during that class or anything. So this is a hopping booth. Has been for the past two or three years. Lots of booths so you can try out machines and not all booths are like that. This one is. So we're going to go in and check it out. Get set up for later today. So it's, it's uh, magnets here, and then you know if you were to hold something down there, it's got a lot of, not a lot of pressure, but it's got a copper brass, a brass type uh, copper alloy for, for grounding, for conducting, you know, just for holding odd shaped small parts. You've seen me use the Build Pro tooling, you've seen JD use the Build Pro table, uh, all kinds of clamps, toggle clamps like this for, for fixturing, uh, hand clamps, V pads, magnets, good stuff. DC. It does uh, AC-DC TIG as well as MIG, stick, flux core. So this is a pretty new machine.
essentially a power tool for a welder. You take the torch out of somebody's hand to make them more productive. Okay? They don't have to start, they don't have to stop. You give it a direction of travel, you tell it how fast you want it to go. If we had a welder hooked up to it, we would arm our torch here and we tell it to go. At which point I can make this thing run to an infinite distance, so I can make it run up until it hits a stop. And when it hits, say, a stop lock, it would turn itself off. Or I can make it run, say, a fun, finite distance. I could say, run for six feet, turn yourself off when you're done. Or I can also stitch weld with the same unit. And I can have it, you know, weld three inches, run high speed for six, nine, whatever it is, turn the torch back on, run another three inches, and we can do that, tell it to, again, to run a finite distance or all the way out until we hit a stop on it. Battery powered or AC powered. And then we make them in all sorts of different shapes and sizes depending upon the application. So say if you were doing walls where you have a contour, say like a field directed tank, we have another unit that the same base features, but it stops on the sidewall, so it's able to travel and follow the contour. It's a weld on the floor, you know, underneath it. This is our soft launch on our new kind of new digital platform that we have for both welding and cutting. So we've now got digital EtherCAD connection, uh, touch screen displaying our weave width as well as actual drive speed for reverse, actual tractor speed now, capture well dead uh, from the power source moving forward. So again, it's our, our new capture uh, moving forward. We've got joystick capability now to so drive, trying to bridge that gap, trying to appeal to the next generation of gaming. Yeah. So, bluing on the side over here. So when, when you're welding, that's the heat blue. If you leave that there, then this is gonna to start to rust at some point. So we wanna be able to take that off and make it look like this one over here. Now, typically people use picking paste, which is an acid. Okay, that means you need full hazmat material to use that. I need gloves, I need respiratory protection. Then, or I would use abrasives. If I use abrasives, I scratch the surface and then I have to bring it back to a nice finish. So I'm gonna do use an electrochemical action here. I'm gonna use, I've got some liquid in here it's a mild acid. We tell people it's so mild, it's less strong than Coca-Cola. But we're going to use an electrical current with it, and the combination is going to take this off. And I'll clean at the rate of about three feet per minute. So these are refillable, so you can buy a larger quantity. Because it's a little bit of an acid, I use a cleaner just to neutralize my acid. And you can see that we have not cleaned. No, 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 no. And that's the only thing I have to do with it now. Because I've taken all this, what we call the carbon deposit off, this will passivate itself within 48 hours. That's according to ASTM specs.
Jody Collier, thanks for coming to Fab Tech. How many, how many have been to more Fab Tech than just this one? How many this, let's just say this, how many is this your first Fab Tech? Right, almost everybody it seems like. How many have been to two? sleep and uh, wound up going and it was still awesome even though I was horribly uncomfortable throughout the day. So I got kind of bitten by the bug and fortunately I, you know, I, I was able to go year after year. I only missed two or three in the past, well since then, since 1990. So now it's Fab Tech. It's even better. It's bigger. Now it's even, it's even better because of social media and Instagram. You know, who's on Instagram? Awesome welding community on Instagram, right? A lot of people helping each other out. I think that's just great. So when Esau asked me if I'd be interested in coming and talking about something, I said sure, because I'd probably be hanging out here anyway at this at this booth, you know. So we're we're talking about uh, filler metal selection for TIG welding today. Day two of FabTech 2018. Yesterday was awesome. Met a lot of great people. Hope to meet more today. Had a great time last night at a meet and greet that Isaac Carey and IC Weld put on. And that was sponsored by IMC Markers. So thanks so much. That was an awesome time. Let's go on in. cycle challenge of the Rebel 215, so we're maxed out at 180 amps. We've got some jet rod 7024 3/16. Uh, we're running it as, as hard as we possibly can, trying to shut it down. And we haven't had a, a guy be able to shut it down yet in the last day, so hopefully uh, we can find somebody today. But the neat thing about this machine, remember, also holds a spool of wire. Yeah. So the power of the machine only comes from about that wide. When you look inside of it, 110 or 220. Of course, today we're running on 220 because 180 amps, you're not going to get a 120 volt plug. So, duty cycle only reads 25% for it, but nobody's been able to hit it. So, awesome. We've been happy how it's, how it's worked out. doing really good at Fab Tech. They've got this, uh, this outside area and there are uh, a lot of booths set out here with uh, interactive things, little challenges, pyramid challenge, uh, you know, using the big uh, oxy lamps and the big uh, cutting torch to cut through really thick steel. 
pushing a duty cycle on, on uh, jet rods with a small welder. Good, a good boot.
So Jody, this is our uh, new ABM 12 beveler. Uh, max capacity in one pass is 12 millimeters, 18 max capacity. So we can cut off half inch in one pass to a knife edge at okay. 30 degrees. Okay. Uh, it's a shearing type unit. Uh, one cutting wheel will last you about 1,500 linear feet of bevel. Uh, they are resharpenable. So you can resharpen them about two or three times depending on how bad the cutter is after a, a set. Uh, the main thing is you can put it at a machine shop, they can surface grind it, uh, make you a shim to put on the back side to keep everything square again. It's very quiet, runs about eight foot a minute. So the six and a half foot by four and a half foot version is $7,500 and we can adapt it to most of the plasma systems that are on the market. So if you've already got a system in house, it doesn't require an extra one. How about the, the capacity as far as the stroke and the length and all that is what's it comparable to one of Six and a half foot this way and four and a half foot this way. You may have seen me with this one on a, on a video one time with Roy Crumrine doing some parts, some little oil filters. He had a, a run of those things, so it's got purge capability and things like that. But I'll let I'll let Roger kind of tell it because he knows the product a lot better. Absolutely, as uh, as Jody mentioned, we do have the purge capability. Uh, we have uh, uh, the clutch capability, which is very seldom found in the turntable world. But a lot of people like to declutch their their uh, part and spin it around. You can also re-engage it, turn it on, you get spinning here. Uh, if you're running a part and you want to do a tack weld, you're running slow here, you can make a tack here, push the jog feature, and zip around to the other side of the part at 10 RPM and slow it back down. Uh, another great selling feature of the unit is this rotational speed. It goes all the way down to 0 0.1 RPMs. It goes all the way up to 10 RPMs. So uh, there's a lot of capability here. We are showing this unit with a uh, optional three-jaw chuck. It does come standard with come standard with the 10-inch uh, table. That's a standard feature. This is an option, and also it comes standard with a momentary on-off foot switch. Uh, that all hooks on the side over here. Uh, we also incorporated into this unit a new feature which is a uh, ground fault circuit breaker. A lot of people will uh, make the connection to their ground and they don't make it correctly. This prevents the unit from blowing up or blowing the board on it by having this feature on here. That's something we've added this year and it's uh, well receptive. This is another uh, part of the, the package if you're interested. It is a variable speed foot pedal and that connects directly into the side there. So also have a forward and reverse on it. And, uh, it's a simple but uh, very effective machine.
our uh, extractor fume gun today. Uh, we're gonna weld a bead with uh, with it on, and then he'll unplug me, and then it'll be with off. So you'll you'll see the smoke disappear into the nozzle, and then when he unplugs me, there's smoke everywhere. So. Onto the purge once, so you can come in. The purge, the plug at the end will expand, so it stays on tight. You got silicone rings to go on there to hold the flange. Okay. Drop it down on. Put your tube on it, and then you twist the handle. And that'll lock it down. So now when you get, so now it's solid. It's locked okay. in. Quick disconnect for the argon here. Quick disconnect for the argon. Then you got a barb that you can go in to put your oxygen analyzer in to be able to plug in. So you can plug in, make sure your oxygen's out of it. It's your adjustment on the front side of it for your fit ups on it. So it's the same type of a clamp. Just allows you to go back in. You can open it. So it goes around. And then with the set screw, so if it's off, you can adjust the set screws out, pop it back down. Awkward that way. And then you put your piece in, lock down. This is our stainless setup with the soft aluminum jaws and the stainless chain. Accessory bag. Junkies podcast. I am your host Jimmy McKnight and the gentlemen to my left need no introduction but we're going to introduce them anyway. Mr. Bob Moffitt from Weld.com, Mr. Jody Collier from Welding Tips and Tricks and also Mr. Ian Johnson from Big Tire Garage. Let's get these guys a round of applause for being here today. shared by the best welders and what do you think is the proper mindset that you need to have? 
Wow. Kabam, right? Yeah. That's a real deep. We're getting deep. <laughs> yeah. 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 A friend of mine, that Roy, that I do the our podcast with, yeah. made a comment. He got some really good advice early on as a welder. Uh, have a machinist mindset. Yep. You know, pay attention to detail. You know, tolerance is, is uh, plus or minus an eighth. Maybe you shoot for plus or minus, you know, 30 seconds or, or less. So, so set your standards really high. Right. So that's a good attribute. Having that attention to detail, you know, just good work ethic, showing up early, uh, putting out an adequate balance of quality and quantity. Usually one or the other is not enough. you got to do both, you know. Um, if you can't stay off your phone, maybe leave it in the freaking car. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a big one. Yeah, it really that's is. That's a problem now. Yeah. But, you know, just being a good worker, being the kind of uh, employee or kind of welder that you would want to hire that would make you money. I guess that's about a wrap. Must have met 200 students here. Talked to lots of instructors. If you are a student or instructor and you've never made it to Fabtech, I encourage you to go to the next one whenever you can. It's an eye opener. It opens your mind to all the possibilities in the welding industry. So we're going to come back for day three and hit it hard again. Day three, Fabtech 2018. I'm tired. We're getting ready to go check out the uh, Fireball Tools booth over in Building A. Uh, Jason Marburger. If you don't know about Fireball Tools yet, well, you will after you after you watch the video. Jason Marburger with Fireball Tools. Awesome stuff, very innovative. If you want to see the best use of these things, check out my buddy's YouTube channel, JD Brewer, and uh, he uses them in some real innovative ways, but it's just awesome stuff. Hey guys, I'm Jason from Fireball Tool. I'd love to show you a demo on the new stuff for 2019. This is the new square we have for welding and fit up. This is called the magic square. And what's unique about this is it's actually two squares to make an adjustable square. So you have a V block in each individual square. You got a, a sl slot for rotating to a, any angle you want. You have some welding offsets for clearance for weld in here. And what's kind of unique about it, having two squares, is that you get your obtuse angle and your acute angle all at the same time. So now you can choose what side of the, the plate you want to hold the tube at for an angle. Okay, so you can stand the, the new square up vertical. It's four by 12. So the four inches is designed for like gate picket spacings. Uh, so you have a shim to basically separate your pickets. Okay, and it's got a real easy toolless lock. Nice big thick handle to be able to wrench on it pretty hard. And it comes in cast iron and aluminum. And then you can switch the pivot point to the outside of the square here. And what that's going to allow you to do, I'll pull this over here, is give you capabilities to have like a fixture that's isolated away from your material. So you can pull the material in and out and you can weld your parts in. So if you've got lots of them to do, you don't have to keep pulling the square on and off your material. It's actually pretty fast. Okay, And until you can put it over the top. So let's say you had a cross tube that's like that on a different plane. You're isolated there. Right? So you got some adjustability on the top squaring capabilities there. It's pretty slick. Here's our new swivel base clamp. So if you guys have always find if you have a fixture table like this, is that you want to nail that part to that tube, you normally have to search around for a hole. Well, now you have two inches of adjustment to be able to find 
exactly where you want. You can swivel and position the clamp with a little bit more precision than before. And this, these are going to attach to any of the Bill Pro Stronghand Bessie clamps that you can just add the swivel foot to the base. So it's pretty handy. It's pretty slick. Okay. The other good things we got going on here is having a offset clamp. This is the traditional clamping style clamp where the center line, the clamp is in here. I have now moved the center line to the clamp offset. What that's going to allow you to do is to get inside welding tubes such as like this where you couldn't before or reach inside the small areas of the square. It has a a sacrificial bolt so that you can weld it to anything you want make a uh, your own custom fixture you can weld a piece of tube steel to it make it your own clamp whatever you want to do I've welded lots of clamps to things before and sacrificed it here's another thing that bugs me like this table separate squares it doesn't go underneath right but this one does because the lower clearance Here's the other problem I have with this. Is because this old style clamp is in the center line, when you go between two parts, it pinches your hands in between here. Or the new offset, this is like a wrench. A wrench should have an offset in it. So now you can reach in here, your hands are above your plate. It's not pinching your hands. So it makes a lot of sense. These will be hopefully available in January for sale. I barely it's pretty slick. They're going to come in three different sizes, this size and two sizes smaller. This is one more newest feature to the Fireball tool line are these precision magnetic shim blocks. Uh, they're one inches wide, two inches long, and vary in thickness from 3 16 all the way to two inch. And they have a magnet on them. So let's just say you wanted to find something around the shop that's three and a half inches. You go around searching for it, but you can just add blocks to make three and a half inches. Click it on there, and off you go. So you can stand up. There's a shim three and a half inches. I've gotten rid of piles of stock, just what these are going to replace. Uh, so their versatility, so say you wanted to have this tube, center line, if you wanted to weld this in the center of this tube, you could just put a half inch spacer there. Right, or so the tube's got to move around a lot, you could just put the, and now you can move the tube and, and slide it around. Just basically save some time, have some precision shims in the shop. I call these shop shims, so they're pretty handy. It is a 32-piece set. If you want to buy more, the 316s will sell, sell them in packs of four. So you can continue to grow your kit if you want to. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the quick demo, and I'll catch you on the next one. is non-destructive portable testing devices for hardness testing for metal. Okay. Um, where our niche is, is right now everybody that's testing metal, you got to pick up the big piece, take it to a bench top, test it, and usually you have to cut it off to get it there so you're yeah. destroying it. Where we just take a simple instrument right to the metal itself and do the test there. So this is our lead. It's our most popular. Uh -huh. It's our easiest to use. Um, and it's our most accurate. Okay. It's a rebound hammer. So you have right. a little ball here with a little one denter and it just pings the metal and tells you the hardness. Okay. Um, so it can read in any of the scales, Rockwell B, Rockwell C, Brunel, Vickers, all that good stuff. Um, you go in here, make sure so we have our D device connected. You see in here, you can pick the scales. So you have your Brunel, your Vickers. Our, our native unit is Lieb. Uh, most people we're seeing use Rockwell C. Um, and then it's as simple as once you have all that set up, you load this, 
Simple load, put it on, push this button. That's your reading. Load it, push your button. Usually people would like to do a series of, you know, yeah. five or six readings. Yeah. Now I'm getting bad measurements, look at that. So this block is a 55 Rockwell C, so you see it average out 55.3. A, a port -a band blade or a sawzall blade or something in here. This is just a guide, so you don't have to put a wrap around on a pipe. Just mark it, put this on there. Takes it off really easily, you know. Just set through. Yeah. Locks into place. Hey guys, my name is Ben from MagSwitch. Welcome to FabTech 2018. We do switchable magnets. These are magnets that turn off and on. Super strong. They're used to fit up materials. And when they're off, they're all the way off. So, the worst problem with magnets, when they're in your shop, the grinding dust, the debris that you find everywhere, sticks to them. These ones, it's completely off all the way. No residual magnetism, so we fix the worst part about magnets. MagSwitch puts this technology in a lot of tools. We do angle tools that adjust to all different types of angles. This one here is a pivot angle, and it's got a gauge. So you can move it wherever you need to. Lock that down. Secure it to your part. Tack, tack, you're good to go. We also do magnetic vices and heavy lifting systems. This is our MagSwitch magnetic drill. It's got a base that you can move the magnets to work on pipe and awkward materials without any additional bases or attachments. You don't have to weld any sort of flat materials to your workpiece. You can just position that magnet right where it needs to be and lock it down. It's also a manual switch, so when this drills on a wall or overhead and you lose power, it's not going to fall down. So everything's in place. You can vary the power of these magnets, so if you want to be able to position it but still hold the weight of the drill, you can do that safely and move it exactly where it needs to be. One other thing we do that's really incredible in this drill, if you look at the bottom, we've got these smaller magnets and more of them. And we do this because it makes the field depth shallower. 
So we can work stronger on thin materials. If you've ever used a magnetic drill and you're working with an electromagnet, the, f the drill field is really deep and it doesn't work really well on thin materials. You have to use backer plates and more material to make it stronger. This will work solid on eighth inch materials. And you can run your drill, it's completely isolated from the magnets. We have a couple different uh, bottles. This is the larger. It'll do two and a quarter inch holes, three inch depth of cut. It's variable speed and it does forward and reverse so you can also tap with it. And that's got the same exact design. Smaller magnets, more of them, they pivot. You can work on round materials. And those are the mag switch mag drills. A lot of shops, they have materials that are sharp or hot and you're moving those materials with a, a magnet on a stick essentially that gets dirty. Our tools stay clean, so you can use them on something that's dirty, hot, or sharp, and it's gonna stay clean over time. We do a lot of hand lifters for moving those parts that are ergonomic. You can put your uh, magnets right on them and they're rock solid. So pick up those parts, it turns off, it stays clean. This is an electric version, so if you're cutting parts out of a skeleton on your cutting table, you can turn this on and off. Now you'll notice the field is really shallow here. It's not pulling through to my steel table. So that's great. It's not going to grab the slats in your cutting table. We also use a rechargeable battery. And that's nice. Once this magnet is in position, it's not using any electricity at all or battery power. So it's fail safe. If you get to the end of your charge cycle or someone takes that battery out, it's not going to drop apart. This is great in any facility that has no touch policies for steel. So anything hot or sharp, very easy to move around without injuring someone. These are our fit up tools. We do a lot of alignment tools. It's a lot quicker and there's a lot less rework uh, when fitting up materials. So what we've got going on here, we have a stiffener, a piece of material that we want to come even with this base material. And if it is not even, if your uh, stiffener has an air gap between here and the base material, it can affect your weld. So we want to get all that down. We turn these magnets on. This is about 3,000 pounds of um, pressing force. And what's going to happen when I screw this down, this is going to close this gap. If you look here nice and close, and as we're pulling the base up and pushing this member down, and that's going to give you a good weld. And the benefit of using a tool like this, you don't have to use any dogs, wedges, half clamps. You're pressing that member down without having to weld a piece of material and pry off of it. Now that's good because after using a dog or a wedge, you have to cut it off, grind that material down so it's nice and smooth again. You don't have to do that with a magnet. It's just switchable, turn it on and off. It's nice and easy, lightweight so you can move it around the shop. Great way to uh, align materials. Form that gives you this liquid bridge so okay. you can take advantage of melt off as opposed to amperage you know on your current density chart so like if I were to take a 1 16th and this is wire feed speed and this is amperage as I go up at wire feed speed it's like a one-to-one -one increase in amperage but when I take a small diameter wire and I increase my wire feed speed I can't melt off I can't pull any more current uh -huh. so what we do is we create one arc cone that's as big as your puddle. So it's like running jet rod for me. Yeah. So 
you can see here, if you've ever run Paul, said like 600 feet, it's just screaming. It feels like you fell into a hornet's nest. This is how the fish are. Uh, this is the Vertex 360 Plus. We can have two students using the machine at the same time. The big thing for Lincoln this year is we're adding TIG welding functionality. TIG welding flat plate, lap joint TIG weld in both aluminum, stainless, and mild steel. So we put the torch in here. The important thing to remember is the filler metal is virtual, so you're not going to be dabbing it into the joint. Okay, you're going to be dabbing it out here. So here we have our AirVantage 566X. So this is a multi-process machine. So it's essentially a foreign one. We have almost 600 amps of welding output along with 20 kilowatts of auxiliary power. We have a 60 CFM and 100 uh, PSI air compressor built in. And then we also have a 10 GPM hydraulic pump to uh, power a hydraulic system from it. So when you want to talk biggest and baddest, this is it for your machines. So typically someone who would use this product would be the rail industry or large construction and repair. So they will fix something like a large excavating equipment in the mine or be on the back of a uh, service truck to fix rail. Also with this machine, it is multi-process. So you can run your CV wire, you can arc gouge with the air built in. We also have downhill pipe and a DC TIG mode in it as well. So also the machine has a 66 horsepower turbocharged Deutz engine. Give you a look inside. So this is fitted with the EPA, EPA Tier 4 regulations. So the after treatment has the DOC up in here. So it is compliant with all state and federal regulations.
was an inch and a half. Okay. And a four and a half. You can buy one handle and you know, interchange the blades. You just pop the two screws off. Is this a special one with that? No. Every handle will have the okay. quarter inch hole. You just put the brush. Oh, sweet. Yeah, okay. So, awesome. I mean, you can buy the brush from us or yeah, you yeah, can yeah. buy just whatever. And then we also, um, the, the pipe comes in uh, anywhere from three quarter up to two inch diameter. Uh, so this particular unit is newer. Um, we've got a pendant controller here that can raise and lower the boom. It's an air over hydraulic system or pneumatics over hydraulic. Goes up and down. And then it has a, uh, a brake on the column. You pull this thing around with one finger. You can weld anything you want to in a 56 foot diameter. so you guys can weld more every day and go home less tired. Well, that was awesome. Fabtech 2018, that's a wrap. Next year, it's in Chicago. Brought you along with me on this trip for those of you that couldn't make it because it's so awesome. If you can ever go and, you, and you're into welding and fabrication, I highly encourage you to go. Hope to see you in Chicago next year. Peace out. <laughs>